So hello and welcome to this full demo overview video of Katelnikov from SSSR Labs. <laughs> Now this is an oscillator, almost a voice. We have pitch control, octave shifting, as you can see on the screen, a selection for smooth or discrete wavetable positions. This will blend around the wavetables and with a switch for some licensed electric druid waves, attack waves, which mix different brightnesses. Both of these are 8-bit. Harmonic series, which is a series of sine waves moving up and down the harmonic series, either discreetly stepped or smoothly morphed. And then HD 12-bit waves that model and emulate real instruments and analog synth waves as well. Sine squares, saws, that kind of thing. We've got a modulation depth selection just under pitch and wavetable where we can use the onboard transient generator to modulate wavetable position. This is a bipolar control and we can actually use this with the incoming CV input to invert LFOs, envelopes, whatever you want to throw in there. We have an onboard VCA. It's normal to five volts, so we get nothing, turning this up, we get the full output. So we've got a volume control effectively, but we've also got an AM input, and this becomes an attenuator for that. So treat it like a VCA or even audio rate AM modulation, which we'll explore later, which is a fantastic way of creating new overtones. We have exponential FM with an attenuator. Again, something we can route the onboard transient generator to or plug in. The inputs are volt per octave, FM, AM, wavetable position and sync. Now, every waveform has a zero phase a zero crossing and we can resync to the start of that waveform either with gates if we want to just be hitting this and just get it to reset to that zero in time with a sequence or audio rate which we'll explore later in the video the onboard transient generator can be an lfo an ad or an ar envelope the ar will sustain so we can do attack sustain release we have an attack and a decay and a release time, like a rise and a fall. The onboard LFO will show us the actual rate, and it gives us an indication of the voltage of the LFO or envelope. And we have a slow, normal, and fast switch. We can gate it for the AD and AR modes. We can take it directly out and plug in other things, so it's actually nothing to do with modulating Katelnikov itself. We also have an onboard filter, which went off. We get all that nice aliasing and top end from these 8-bit waves. The filter position one just takes a little bit of that top end off. And filter position two, there's quite a lot of top end reduction, which is great just to make everything darker. And we'll explore that in some patches in the video. So let's get stuck in. So in this part of the video, let's explore the available waveforms in this wavetable. I'm going to flick this up to discrete. We can, of course, morph, which we'll come to later. And we start with the Druid set, which is 16 8-bit waveforms from the Electric Druid set. And these are fully licensed. So let's turn this up. these sound different with this onboard filter setting one intended to just take a little bit of that alias top end off you can hear that top end change and two really does cut some highs out but it's great just for kind of muffling down this tone and help it sit in a more dense patch
We then move on to the attack waveforms, and these are 16 waveforms with interleaved alternating brightness, and these again are 8 bit. Scan up with filter 1. Scan back down with filter setting 2. Filter back off. We're now on the harmonic, and this is different harmonic signals from the harmonic series. The first waveform is a sine, having the bass frequency, and then we work up through the harmonics. And again, these are 8-bit. Because this is a sine, you could flick down to that filter to completely get rid of that top end and get a nice pure sine wave. Going between filter off and one, you can just alter that top end. So here's the harmonic series. I'm going to put morph on and I'm going to put filter one on just to get rid of a bit of that top end. Back to discrete stepped waves. We move to the HD bank and this is 32 waveforms which are meant to emulate sounds of analog oscillators, real instruments and the human voice. And these are 12 bit. I'm going to leave the filter off. So those are the waveforms, let's get into a couple of patches that just show off the quality of these waves and morphing through these wavetables. So here's some wavetable bass riff action set against a kick and a hi-hat. I'm just going to change the sequence that's coming in to modulate the wavetable position and I'm going to move through the wavetables as well. So for this patch, we've gone for a much slower, more drone-like melodic phrase playing over a chordal drone. Here's the background. Just a droning chord tone with its timbre modulated. That's Katelnikov Dry. Let's go to a sign, nice whistly and over that reverb with the drone. I'm going to add in some wavetable modulation, which is from this E352. You see this triangle shape, just a basic low LFO. It's going to move that wavetable. So let's play around and check out Kotelnikov with some ambient parts, I guess. Let's take that filter off. Let's move from Druid to Attack Wavetables. Let's 
So let's check out the transient generator. This is either an LFO, an AD envelope, or an AR envelope. We'll start with LFO. I have the actual output from the transient generator on this purple cable going into the top channel on the Mordax data, which is the green trace on that scope. You could patch this out anywhere in your system, whether you're using this module or not. It's really handy patched back into itself, but you could use it somewhere else as well. I've then got the audio out into the blue trace, the second channel of the Mordax data. Let's flip this into LFO mode and see what's going on. So you can see the transient generator green, my audio which is blue. This is just controlling the onboard amplitude control. So I'm patching the transient generator back into itself, or at least back into the module itself. Now we have slow, normal, and fast ranges. It'll go well above human hearing. Um, if we use it uh, as an oscillator, which we will do later on, in the normal mode, it'll go pretty high, so that's AM modulation. A bit like FM modulation, but instead of audio rate modulating the frequency of the oscillator, we are audio rate modulating its amplitude. Let's explore the AM a little bit more. Let's find a wavetable, say the Druids. And then we're going to take this up to audio rates. up too fast. There we go. So if you want to add a kind of extra alias grungy sampler top. Just pull this out. So that's the wavetable without and then with. Without and with normal mode gets pretty fast. Let's go to a sign. And the slow mode goes nice and slow. While we're exploring the kind of audio rate side of this, let's unplug it from amplitude. And by default, this is patched into FM and these knobs start to take effect from 12 o'clock. So when you want to cancel it out, you just throw it to one side. When we actually plug into FM and we don't use the onboard modulation routing that routes this transient generator to FM and wavetable position, we can invert incoming CV as well. So it's got a kind of nice dual function that's slightly different between its onboard normal in. Let's pump up the FM. Go into the fast range. Like any FM and audio rate modulation, you can find these really great sweet spots. So that's the aliasing that's on the sine wave already. We could filter that out with the onboard filter switch. Then let's add the FM back. And then the filter in. Getting this kind of in tune and harmonious is a case of matching the modulation depth, commonly known as FM index, and the rate. The same rate at different depths. Can be both clangorous and inharmonic, or more harmonious and melodic. So going back to amplitude modulation, let's plug in a gate and see what happens. 
going to go to a richer wave, let's say one of the druids. So in AD mode, speed this up a bit. This will not re-trigger regardless of the gate. You know, when the attack's too long, it will not re-trigger in that attack stage. We're getting two different rhythms. However, it will re-trigger in the decay stage, but it will do that from where it is in its current decay from five volts back down to zero volts. So you don't get that click straight back down to zero. Notice this is now higher up. In AR mode, we actually get the sustain phase, so it's more of an ASR, attack sustain release. That's just the trigger that's coming in, because these are set fast. And we can re-trigger this, so the attack's too high, it's not coming up far enough. Again, this will re-trigger in the release stage. So it's a great little transient generator that can be a basic LFO to beautifully move these waves with all their kind of crunchy character. Let's just hear that. It's going to take the gate out, go into LFO mode. This is now static volume because I've just unplugged the amplitude modulation. Have a look at these waves. can morph between itself, it can do AM overtones, it can do FM overtones, back. it could go well up into audio rate, could even use it as a secondary oscillator. So before moving on to the next part of the video, let's check that out. So we're still in LFO mode, I'm coming out of the transient generator down on this cable just off screen, straight in and here's that LFO. Now as I ramp this up, this is going straight into my mixer and this is what we're recording. can use the transient generator as an oscillator. Fast mode. So there's a bonus oscillator, should you feel like you want it, for anywhere else in the system. So to finish on, let's check out that sync input. We've had a little look at FM, AM, wavetable modulation, the wavetables themselves, and the transient generator. Now we've got the E352 next to this, playing a triangle wave, nice and simple. Let's plug it into sync and see what we can do with some audio rate sync between the two devices. Listen to the tone change. A bit lower, grittier. That's without and with again. I really like that, so I'm going to get the transient generator going. Table. Bit of FM maybe. Again without sync. FM sounds a little silly, but with the sync. Oh. 
So it's just another avenue of potential taunts to explore with Katelnikov. Thanks for watching. Go support me on Patreon if you'd like extra content, including a full patch breakdown of the first little video that I put up with Katelnikov, as well as other exclusives to people on Patreon. Those guys are all ace. Hit like, comment, subscribe. I'd love to hear what you think of this thing. If you've got one, your patch tips, that transient generator, I think makes a real difference. A lot of character in these waves as well. Check it out. Thank <laughs> you.